Hi everyone, welcome back to Adventure 365, the channel that is going places and we are going places. We're out in barrel again and I'm drinking uh, Elvish juice, so don't expect anything to be so coherent. But we are out and we are enjoying ourselves. We did have a big problem with the truck yesterday. Well, not a big problem. We had a small electrical fire caused by a fuse link catching fire. Uh, it was a pain. We put us out by about a day. Uh, by the time we got it all fixed, and it was so hot yesterday, we just really gave up and drank beer. Got it fixed, came this morning. So I'm in, uh, we're in Scotland, we're in Dumfries and Galloway. Uh, let me show you what actually happened. Like I was saying, we had a fuse link that caught fire. Now, I'll insert a little bit of footage that I managed to get on my phone just here. Hey guys, we've just um, had a small fire. Ow, that's hot. See if you can see that any better, but... Uh... Oh, here's the dogs. We've just arrived back because we were having problems with the electric fan. Hi, baby. I saw that. And, uh, and the fire. Mm -hmm. we've had a fire. So I think I may need to do a bit of rewiring before we go away today. And I ended up replacing this fuse link. Uh, oh, you can't see it. Hang on, guys. Let me get you off the tripod. So I ended up replacing this fuse link here. This, as you saw from the video, it actually caught fire. Now, there was a reason for it catching fire. Because this was a 19J, the, the temperature gauge actually reads differently than the 300 TDI engine. Now, even though we put a different sender unit in, it still doesn't quite read right. It reads high. So when we set the temperature of the fan, we set it too low. So the fan was coming on too much and it was overrunning. And that's what caused the fire. Basically, it's because things weren't talking to each other and I wasn't aware that the gauge wasn't reading correctly. But it's all sorted now and we're here and we're drinking beer. So we're going to be chilling here for a couple of days, drinking a bit more Elvis juice, testing this power station and up to yeah, it's awesome. I've got my laptop on it again. I've got another drone battery, a phone. Uh, I'll put these microphones on charge in a bit. This thing is turning out to be phenomenal. I'm really liking it. It's been so versatile. It's great, isn't it, Karen? Mm, yeah. Brilliant. So, uh, brilliant. come back a bit later. We're going to be putting some food, maybe some, setting fire to the grass again. <laughs> no, Karen says no. So, uh, I'll see you in a bit, guys. There you go guys, first course done, some char grilled peppers, some little plum tomatoes and some beef kebabs and then we've got a second course, we've got some nice ribs going on after this and Karen's getting a beer out the fridge. Oh here she comes, she's got beer <coughs> and she's injured herself. What have you done, banged her head? And me, slide. And she hasn't even had a beer yet. Well she has, we tell a lie. She has what, one, one beer in? One beer in and bang your head. <laughs> what have we got cider-wise, Karen? We've got pineapple and passion fruit. Yeah. And rhubarb and ginger. That's yours. Rhubarb and ginger cider. Not Mark, rhubarb and custard. If we get back to the shop, I'll bring you one for next week. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? Really? That's staying in. That's going in the final cut. <laughs> Now that is what I call the first course. Morning! Oh, we had a brilliant sleep last night in Beryl. It was so comfy. She is awesome. I am so pleased with this truck so far. Oh, and by the way, we didn't get to the second course on the uh, barbecue. So the ribs are back in the fridge. We'll have them another day. 
So uh, it's breakfast time. We're going to have some coffee and then we're going to head out. We're going to go and see some local sites, see what there is around here. Uh, we found a few places. Karen wants to go out for dinner this afternoon. Uh, yeah, this afternoon, some lunch. So uh, yeah, let's get some coffee on. So she's got she's got to have some uh, ground coffee. It's Karen's holiday more than mine, and this is what she wants. So grinding coffee, that's what we're doing. So measure measure the beans out, fill the grinder. Actually, they smell really good as well. And now it's just this for about 10 minutes. Well, actually, that wasn't too bad. That was only a couple of minutes. Ah, oh, smell. That smells amazing. Awesome, fresh coffee. Ah. Filter coffee done in the jet boil. Now fill that with the water, boil it up, and we've got fresh coffee. You know, just like that to uh, do its thing. I, t I tell you what guys, I am rubbish till I've had coffee, I tell you. Coffee's got to go in mugs. And I've had these mugs for, I don't know how long now. My sister bought them for me, the Volkswagen camper mugs. So they've got like a split bay T25 on. I've got to add, I must have had them for over 10 years. And they've been in every camper van and four-wheel drive that we've had for that long it's probably longer than it's probably close to 15 years I think these came from just campers and they they're great they just don't break this the set comes as four and there's two in this truck and the other half of the sets in the other truck so in Heimdall so it's split between both trucks but yeah funny isn't it what you keep in your trucks There you go. Are you busy? One French press. So let's see how this turned out. Oh, that looks like coffee to me. Love the Jet Boil French press. Karen, your coffee's done. Okay. <clears throat> have a look. Have a look. Thought you'd have I'll a taste. I'll have a taste. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad. Awesome. Not bad. Could it do with being a bit stronger? Possibly a tad. Yeah. A tad stronger. I thought that. I thought um, it might need to. But that's, is... that's a whole one of these. That's a whole. Yeah. Let's have a taste. Because we like quite a strong coffee, don't we? Yeah, could yeah. do with being strong. We'll find a stronger one. Yeah. Perfect. I don't know if you can see that, guys, because uh, that lens is not very long, but there's a rodo. In fact, it might be a red. She looks red. Yeah, it might be a small red deer. Young. She's young. walking down the middle of the road. We're definitely in Scotland. I don't think you can make her out on this lens. That's me maximum zoom on this lens. I'll see if I can change the lens without before she goes. She came, she came back. I managed to change the lens. I'm hoping you can see that. There you go, there she goes. Well, we're definitely in Scotland when there's deer walking around on the roads. We've been all sightsee today. 
we've been all touristy. We're at Drun Rodden Standing Stone or Standing Stones. It's one or the other. It's either Standing Stone or Standing Stone. As there's only one, I'm, I'm going to say stone. And there it is in the background. Yeah, we thought we'd have a, a look at the local attractions and things to see. So, like I said, we've been all touristy. It's lovely here. Can't tell you how nice it is. Weather's just perfect. It's a bit cloudy, but it's not cold. Oh, I might be wrong. I can see more than one stone. There's two of them are lying down on the floor. Let's go and see what the plaque says. Standing stones, there you go. So it is multiple. And that's where we are. And we're going to another medieval site in a minute. I don't know if, you can, if you'll be able to make that out. So if you pause it and you can see it, that's all about the stones. This is amazing. These have been here for three to four thousand years. And the guys who moved them, I mean, really? They're big lumps of rock. <laughs> and we're going to see some more in a minute at another site. Wow. They don't know what they were used for, as you can see in the uh, description. They must have had some ceremonial purpose, but, you know, it's amazing, isn't it? Thousands of years ago they were doing this. What a place. It makes you all tingly and goosebumpy, Luke. Ooh. On to the next one. Now we're off to Druntrodden Rock Art, Rock Art uh, which is apparently 250 metres down here. We're walking through a farm at the moment, which is kind of deserted. Well, we're following the arrows, but it says it's down here. I wish I'd put my hat on as well. <laughs> I'll tell you what, guys, the views are spectacular. Just overlooking the sea over there. I think Karen's enjoying herself as well. She likes exploring new places. That's where we are. Let's go and have a look at this rock art. And there's the description of everything that's here. So I'll try to get in on that as close as I can for you. And these are the rocks with the circles carved in them. Again, three to four thousand years ago. Oh yeah, you can see them. I don't know, picking them up on camera. It's definitely depressions cut into the rock. How weird. Oh yeah, you can see these ones better. See them? Cut into the rock round here. So they all seem to be, well, the ones I've seen so far seem to be one, two, two outer rings and an inner ring. Yeah, they're carved into the rocks everywhere, but they're just really hard to see. I guess it would be easier if they were wet, which yeah. is probably most of the time in Scotland. It's a very occasionally that uh, it's ever this warm. Then you'd need boots. Then you'd need boots. And Karen would need a raincoat, wouldn't you? Yes. <laughs> An umbrella. An umbrella. <laughs> there's, another, there's some more 
carved in, carved in round here. Let's go and have a look on the other side because there's some more on the other side over there. Now we're over in the second um, area. These ones are massive. I don't know if it does it justice on the camera whether you can see them or not. It's weird. They're up to 10,000 years old. So you've got you've got all the outer rings, the centre, then a line cut through to another piece, like a cup at the bottom. So it's cups and rings. What does it mean, guys? You can get your tin foil hats on right now and tell us what it means. Yeah, leave your thoughts in the comment below what you think they are. Taking Karen out for dinner. Started off with coffee. We're just waiting for the main course to come. Karen's got the fish and chips. She looks amazing, actually. Gammon egg chips, tomato, and pineapple. Mm, see you in a bit, guys. Well, that was an amazing meal. We really enjoyed that. And we're in uh, Port William in Dumfries and Galloway. And the restaurant we had the food in was The View. And it's called The View because of this. And what a view. That's pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> and he's one of the locals. <laughs> Just chilling out by the beach. Even the beach is quite nice, isn't it? This guy's been here for a while. That's cool. First time I've been down to Port William. It's a really nice place. Right, onward. This is our final attraction for the day. We've driven for about half an hour after having something to eat to Port Logan Fish Ponds. And I tell you what, it was worth the drive. It's absolutely stunning. The sea over there, just in front of that gorgeous green Land Rover. I'm not biased by any, by any means, but you know, it's that gorgeous green one. <laughs> so we're going off down now to uh, Logan Fish Ponds. Quite intrigued because it's just a little white building at the end of this uh, long drive. How cool is this? I think we may be having a, a bit of a wonder around here. There's dogfish and rays in there. I made him jump. The Pollock. Yeah, you're spot on. Yeah. It doesn't hurt you, sir. And they're more Pollock. Are they Pollock as well? Yeah, I would have said so. Right, we're out at the pool now at the back. It's full of fish. Just waiting for them to come and feed them. Where 
That's it. Do you want this shit? So sweet. That's your favourite, aren't they? I love rice. Amazing, aren't they? Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Mom, <laughs> do we camera shy? We're on video. Oh, look at that. <laughs> There's some great things here, guys. This is. What was it to get in? Four quid? Four quid each? Port Logan fish ponds, guys and girls. Absolutely spectacular and well worth coming. And the views here are amazing. That's awesome. Right, I think it's time for coffee now. I think Karen needs a brew. Well, what an awesome day we've had. We've seen loads of things. We have been tourists all day. It's great for us. Beryl's been faultless. Not a problem. We've got a couple of little niggles, but we'll sort that out in the workshop. So when we go back, it's, more, it's bonus footage when we have to do more work to her. But yeah, we've... Uh, just enjoyed ourselves all day and now I'm drinking uh, Copperberg cider. So Mark I'll bring some of this for next week. Now what we're going to do tomorrow is uh, we may have some footage from tomorrow I don't know we may just be seeing family and doing things but what we are doing is going back home picking up the other truck Heimdall and then we're going laning in Wales for three days and then we're off to the bushcraft show um, Mark's coming with us who was in the camping video and we're heading off to the bushcraft show and we'll be there the whole weekend we're actually going before it opens so we're Heimdall will be there on on uh, the bushcraft show stand in the overlanding section so what I'm going to do is wrap this video here guys and there'll be a part two of us laning and getting muddy and if you've enjoyed it give us that thumbs up and I will see you on the next one